Hello friends and welcome back to my channel, Blue Nose Trading. My name is Tori Solis and today I'm going to be sculpting an owl out of one of my Wheel Throne jars. I've been on a jar kick this season, turning all sorts of cute jars into animals. I throw the base of these as a closed form. I need to make a more updated video on throwing a closed form, but I will link to my original video here. Essentially, the jar is thrown as one closed up form, and then when it's trimmed, it's opened up at an angle to make the lid. I store the jar in my damp box after trimming until I'm ready to work with it. Specifically, I'm going to be sculpting a burrowing owl today. That's Alfine Cunicularia for the science-minded friends out there. I might have butchered the Latin, but I gave it my best shot. These are one of my favorite kinds of owl. They're super tiny and super cute. They're a ground-dwelling owl that runs and hops around the prairies and lives underground. The burrowing owl is native to most of the western parts of North America, give and take a few patches and eco-regions, and some parts of South America. Unfortunately, it seems that I live just a slight bit too far east for it to be likely that I would see one of these birds in the wild. But I have seen them in captivity, and I can confirm that they are grade A adorable. I remember the first time I saw this species at the St. Louis Zoo as a kid. The burrowing owls were, were all standing around and they would look right at you. They had such huge eyes and expressive eyebrows, I was immediately smitten. They were instantly my favorite animal that week. My list of favorite animals is more of a catalog that any one being or group is just too small to encompass. There are just too many great animals to choose from, but burrowing owls definitely make the list of greatest hits. The burrowing owl likes areas of wide open space with pre-built burrows preferred. They naturally inhabit abandoned prairie dog burrows, but will dig their own burrows in a pinch. Alternatively, pipes, buckets, and other man-made materials have also been used as nests. Burrowing owls have been seen living in large, open, man-made spaces such as airports or golf courses. These birds are highly adaptable, and it's hard not to give them mad respect for that. There's a natural symbiotic relationship between the burrowing owl and the prairie dog. The owls use abandoned prairie dog caverns as their homes, and their alarm systems help to also warn prairie dogs of common predators and danger. These owls can also live in caverns dug by squirrels, badgers, or people. The nests of burrowing owls are often decorated with bits of dung to attract dung beetles, which are one of this owl's favorite snacks. They mostly eat invertebrates such as insects and worms, and small mammals such as mice. Burrowing owls have also been documented eating small reptiles such as lizards or amphibians and even other small birds. Their more generalist approach to diet isn't very surprising when you think about how adaptable this bird is overall. When it comes to invertebrates, studies show that these owls do have preferences. It seems that termites, crickets, grasshoppers, and beetles are among the favorite for burrowing owls. Unlike most owls we're familiar with, the burrowing owl is not a night owl. It's more of a morning to midday and then hang out again around sunset owl. And honestly, I love that for him. I'm also more of a morning to midday bird myself, so there's synchronicity and resonance there for me. Burrowing owl populations have been, unfortunately, on the decline. The primary reason for this are, is habitat decline and the systematic human destruction of prairie dogs and ground squirrel populations. These rodents have been listed as pests and have been persecuted by the agricultural industry extensively. Burrowing owls also face issues from fragmentation of habitats as well. They're a ground dwelling species and many find themselves unable to find a mate if their living area becomes too small. They're also susceptible to being hit by motor vehicles while they search for potential mates. These are all concerns to consider when we think about how to approach a plan of conservation for this amazing species. I really don't want to live in a world without these adorable owls, so they should at least get a vote next time we're thinking about pouring more concrete out of the urban sprawl across the prairie. 
Burmy owls are resilient and adaptable. With just a little consideration, I think it will be easy for everyone to coexist on this planet together. I'll be glazing this jar with Mako Stroke and Coat Glazes. I've been using this series of glazes for this series of jars, and the results have been predictable and consistent. This is a good quality for glazes to have and work like this. I've noticed that if you get these layered up or applied too thick, they can bleed into each other. This isn't a run off the pot onto your shelf kind of thing, it's more of a mess up your clean lines kind of deal. It can generally be avoided with finesse, but finesse is hard sometimes. It's just another thing to consider and another layer in the process. I also like that these glazes mix fairly well, as in when you mix them on a palette they act a lot like paint. Not exactly like paint of course, but more or less. It's workable. I usually like to mix together my own custom blends for sculptures, like I've done for the creams and browns used on this jar. They don't look exactly like they do wet, as they will when fired of course, but with experience you can get an eye for how to mix them and what to expect. This little owl jar turned out so cute. I love the patterning that he has on his stomach. The glaze all around the eyes didn't run at all, which is always a major plus. Overall, this owl is just as I expected him to be. As of posting this video to Patreon, this owl jar is available for purchase on my website, bluenosetrading.com. There are actually a couple different owl jars up there right now. If you're seeing this video on the YouTube release, you are in the future, and I don't really know what's going to be up on my web store, but you can always go check it out. You might even stumble upon something unreleased on the YouTubes. You just never know. If you'd like to get early access to my videos, consider supporting this channel at patreon.com slash bluenosetrading. For weekly art videos, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Blue Nose Trading. I post a full-length video every Friday and daily art shorts. Thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. Remember that you have great ideas that are worth exploring. Drink lots of water, and I will see y'all next week.